Most of these hang a little bit deeper than what our draft is. Like all the actual line itself will be down. If you're just gonna jump on a boat or do most of your free diving, I would recommend just getting a weight belt. So we're off to the outer edge. Pretty hefty old coral trout. So I actually think that that maximum size limit is to protect anglers against ciguatera. We've just dropped the mooring. We had a good dive on that bommy, saw some dog tooth tuna. Troy got down to 25 meters. I reckon I got down to 20. You can see the marks on my face from the mask pressing on my head. Um, and now we're gonna go anchor on this sand cave. And it's gonna be beautiful, calm day weather tomorrow. So we're gonna go out exploring on the wild side where you can see the waves crashing at the moment. Yeah, lots more to do tomorrow and lots more diving. blue cylinder there's a GPS unit solar panels and stuff like that and you can see that there's a strobe strapped to it as well at night time that'll kick off You've got a nice big pinky there most of these hang a little bit deeper than what our draft is like all the actual line itself will be down yeah all the hooks and that but this this is not one that's like drifted in from Asia this is one of the local um, Australian ones, so hopefully, uh, I mean this has drifted off where they would have wanted it to be deployed, but they'll come back and pick this one up. So, everything's in really new condition, you know, this is not like a, a ghost line. No. It's just, just in the wrong spot. But it's definitely, um, if you're going to be cruising around in the Coral Sea, if you see something like that, <laughs> be very careful around it, you know, it's a tuna long line. I want to get some nice clean sand. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to touch any coral with the anchor chain yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, any more grind, any grinding. Yeah. Um, move to the bommy. We had two dives. Bommy. And Check that long one checked out oh we checked out a long line and we saw dog tooth tuna mm. and you dove to 25 meters doggies 25 meter free dive i probably dove the furthest i've ever dove you did you did pretty close like you did between 18 and 20 i reckon yeah i think those last couple of dives look at the clownfish were quite deep it was interesting to use the torch um that underwater footage that we just shot then was our new Sony cam mm. <laughs> attached to a metal plate mm. all right, to give it some heft and I threw my little lead lenser torch on there as well. Your waterproof lead lenser. So it was a pretty pretty janky sort of setup wasn't it and mm. I, I made sure that when I had the camera it was sort of aimed in the same... I can't undo it now in the same direction that the torch was. I had it actually down like that. But I think that those dog tooth, they came right up. So I think they were quite intrigued by the little glowing The light, dot. yeah. Not much, that? <laughs> not much scares a dog tooth tuna because they're just heavy metal machines. But um, yeah, they're very curious. You know, they really want to investigate things. This is the charging station. How much have we got? How many amps are coming out? Three amps are coming out. That's not too bad. So Pretty we're good. charging the 
cannon battery. That's flat. See, one flash of red light. We're charging the lead lenser battery. Troy's iPhone 4S. I don't even know how this thing still works, but it does. I'm only charging that to get the sat phone number for my mate Tim. Yeah, you never use the thing. No, you use so it to make phone calls. As soon as as soon as we put a little bit of charge and I can open that and get that number out. That's it. <laughs> so it's um if you call us you normally speak to Pascal. But anyway, and I'm using my phone right now and that's charging too. So three point one amps. And this camera will soon be going back in. As soon as I've that is flat. The Sony is flat. All that doggy. So we've got to charge that too. All right, we're going to go for another dive, and we've had a number of questions about our dive gear. Mainly, actually, people asking what's this red vest, and it's just something made out of vinyl stitched together, um, and basically it's just a whole series of pockets that you can put these. Whoops. So you've got these three pound or one and a half kilo dive weights. They're pretty common. Um, they go in each one of these pockets as however much you need. What am, I, what am I swimming around with at the moment? I'm swimming around it too, and I've got them right there. The main thing is when you're a commercial diver like I was, it's, it's not unusual to spend about five, six hours of a day in the water. Um, and if you've got your weight belt on the small of your back, it, you know, like I felt that it could lead to some problems. And also I was a hooker diver. It sounds a bit dodgy, but what it really means is there's a compressor on the surface with a long hose, about 100 metres feeding the air and that hose got caught in the current. Um, sometimes if you were free swimming with a boat following you, they would be pulling on you. So it'd be always better to have it sort of attached here to your jacket and then your shoulders could take the strain, much like a dog in a harness. Um, but I don't, I don't really need it anymore, but I'm loath to throw anything away. So I've kept it. And I just find that it gives, the way my weight is, just because the way guys are built, my legs are heavy anyway. My bum doesn't float like um, Pascal. She swims like that. I don't. I sink anyway. So just having my weight uppermost gives me a nice flat position in the water. But I wouldn't go racing out and spending hundreds of dollars getting one of these made. Um, if you're just going to jump on a boat or do most of your free diving, I would recommend just getting a weight belt. You're not going to give yourself a sore back just a you know like an hour or two a day at most. If you are going to go for it, I like rubber. Um, they're comfortable, but also as you're diving down, if once you get good at it, um, you, as you dive down, water exerts pressure. And if you're wearing a wetsuit or anything, or even your body, that pressure squeezes you. You get skinnier, all right? Your wetsuit and you. A rubber belt, if you have it nice and snug and firm on the surface, will actually, uh, it's, it's in a stretch condition. And as you go down, it, it maintains its same tension. All right, so make sure on the surface that they're fairly tight and when you go down, you won't have your weight belt slipping up around your ribs and looking silly. In another throwback to my commercial days, I still use these big long free diving fins and really for free diving, they are the best. If you're not that experienced and you're still mucking around with your buoyancy, these things can probably cause a fair bit of damage to the coral. So, you know, just be careful. But um, these foot pockets, I've actually had these for years. And this one I actually took a hole punch to. If, you've, if you find your fins are a bit uncomfortable, say on this bone of your foot, it's totally okay and a commercial sort of thing to do to go get a hole punch and whack, put a punch in. Try and get a nice circular hole punch. Don't just cut it with something ragged or any sort of little nick will, will lead off to a tear. This one I've sewn up with a baseball stitch probably about a year and a half ago and it's still hanging in there. But if you make that a nice circle, if there's any tight spots on your fins, you can alleviate it by doing that. So we use those. Um, these are carbon fibre blades because I wore out my other blades commercial diving. You know, we were doing, what, 500 hours a year or something like that underwater. So you run out of thing, you know, you wear things down. So we're doing that and you'll notice that I've got a full foot pocket. When I get these fins, my favourite way of fitting them on is you should be able to just slip them on and they're quite loose because fins push their way onto your foot. But if you don't want to end up with a million blisters, go out and get yourself some 3 mil neoprene soft socks. You can get away with footy socks or work socks for a little while, but nothing really compares to these. They're a bit more slippery, you won't get blisters, and you'll keep your little tootsies a little bit warmer. And if you're like me and you've got small ankles, then you get thicker ones. 
you get thicker ankles after swimming. <laughs> That's um, I never sprain my ankles actually. Like I can roll my ankle, and I've never ever had a sprained ankle, a rolled ankle, a bruised ankle, just because I've spent so much time in these. I think that my ankles are about the strongest part of me. Well, apart from my head. Um, dive masks. I don't have too much to say because each one of them, you know, you really want to uh, suit your own face. And what you want to do is when you're buying a dive mask, is you should be able to just put it on your face, breathe in very gently, and take it away. And it should be a nice vacuum all the way around. You shouldn't have to really suck to make it stick. It should just want to stick there. And the other thing is when you put it on, just push the space where your eyes would normally be. If you just push there, make sure there's no contact. If I got hold of Pascal's mask and put it on, where it's got this bit of plastic, that contacts that bone right between there, my, my caveman bone. Um, and after a, just a small amount of time, that would really cause an ache. So they're the things that you want to get. You want to get a nice seal for your face because every face is different. Um, and you want to make sure that that part doesn't get pressure on it because that's a total killer. I've seen a few people come up on dive boats with a big red mark there and they'll retire with a headache and they're stuffed for the day. Um, that's about it. What do you reckon, Pascal? Yeah, let's get in the water. It's rolling and I want to Okay. Swim. <laughs> oh, one more thing. With snorkels, you can get all sorts of fancy snorkels with little valves here and balls there. I like a really simple one, particularly one I can fold up and put in smaller places. But I don't, I don't go for the big fancy uh, clearing valves and all that. I just want a simple one with a decent size hole. Um, you don't want it too big, so you've got a big air, dead air space. And when I'm clearing my snorkel, you'll often see if you've watched the footage, just before I hit the surface, I'll be tilting my head back like that and I'll be blowing the air out. So when I come up, my snorkel's actually clear. A lot of people you'll see, they come to the top and then <coughs> they need a big charge to blow it out. But if you tip your head back, look at the sky and blow, just as you bring your head up, you'll find that your snorkel's nice and clear, ready to rock and roll. So we're off to the outer edge. We're, we're looking diving. for gutters. Looking for gutters at the outer edge so there'll be some action. All right, so we've anchored up just off the wild side. Um, here at Holmes Reef, this is mostly where the waves are crashing on here. So there's not going to be lots of uh, big, delicate corals. There's going to be some low coral and things like that. But more we're looking for rubble pans and it's more of a fish dive here. Mm. I don't know, it might have a shark come up and see us. There's deep water, it just goes whoop, just Yeah, just out there, there. it's just so, the deep, dark blue. Yeah, but this is nice and clear here, so it's really great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just need to slip into something less comfortable and, uh, and dive in there. Might look like that we're sponsored by the carpentry company here. That's my mate Robo's company. He's about as good a chippy as is a fisherman, so if you want some good timber work done, give him a call if you're living in Cairns. <laughs> the carpentry company.
Oh, we can just jump off the boat and have a snorkel. That's a pretty hefty old coral trout, but these are a blue spot um, and they also a footballer trout, Plectropomus labus, if you want to get really fancy. Um, there's a bag limit of five, but also the size limitations, there's a minimum size of 50 centimetres and a maximum size of 80 centimetres. Because they're a type of cod or a grouper if you like, they start life as female and shift to male. So the bigger ones would all be males. So I actually think that that maximum size limit is to protect anglers against ciguatera. Because trout, um, particularly on these coral sea reefs, and as you go further east of Vanuatu and things, the larger gropus, the larger reef predators, they start to become a ciguatera risk. So this trout is, is probably about 70 centimetres. Right, going by the hand span a meter. So he's uh, he's within size. So that's about as small as they get around here as well. <laughs> it's just it's crazy. Now, it's not a it's not a great reef for coral, but it's just alive with fish. I like these short trips of only a month away. The lemon with our fish. Mm. Let's have a look at what we've got here. It's cooked in butter and garlic. Mm. Salt, big flakes. No knife required. Coral trout flakes. Well, that was the end bit. Mm. Right. Mm. Simple pleasures, hey? Golden cooked fish. Yum. With sprout salad afterwards. With lentil, lentil salad. Sprouts. Once I've made some room on this bowl, lentils. then I'll have some lentil salad. Thank you. 
enjoyed this week's episode of Free Range Sailing and if you did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Now this is just a reminder that our campaign on Bonfire for our t-shirts is now running and you've only got one more week to grab your t-shirt so you better hop to it and click on the link. Link? <laughs>